Hello everyone, it's Matmus here. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. So we are going back to the review of main battle tanks and yes what an absolute classic this one is the Centurion main battle tank and I know I'm a little bit biased because I'm British but let's be honest here guys if you know anything about tanks you know that this vehicle has served very very well during its career and continues to serve to this day so as always I talk a little bit about the vehicle itself its specifications some of its history and then I'll just pop my own personal opinion on what I actually think about this vehicle at the very end Guys, I would really appreciate if you could leave me a comment and a like if you enjoyed today's video. And if you do enjoy my content, feel free to come check out my Patreon page for donation. For any support you want to give, it's much appreciated. So, let's talk about this wonderful tank then. The development of the Centurion main battle tank began in 1943 when the British Army asked for a new cruiser tank equipped with at least a 17 pounder gun. They wanted a fast tank that even though heavily armoured would perform very well in a cross country travel situation. Prototypes of this new tank, known as the A41, were built and sent to Germany in 1945, but the war ended before they actually saw any combat. At first the Centurion, as the new tank was named, it did not represent much, if any improvement over a medium tank then available. The Centurion weighed an incredible 42.5 tons, whereas the Panther Model D back in its day actually weighed 43 tons. It was equipped with a 17 pounder 76.5mm gun that had a muzzle velocity of an extremely impressive 2,900 feet per second. The Panther D, its rival, was armed with a 75mm gun with a muzzle velocity of 3,070 feet per second. The vehicle was powered by a beautiful 600 horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin Meteor V12 engine. The Panther D used a 642 horsepower V12 Maybach engine. Even the next generation Centurion seemed a shadow of the Panther. When the Centurion Mark III was developed, it was equipped with an 83.4mm or 20 pounder gun. The uprated Panther, which had the design work completed but never entered production, was to be equipped with the 88mm gun used on the Tiger II. Both guns had muzzle velocities very close to 3,340 feet per second. Even so, the Centurion III main battle tank was one of the most heavily armed tanks of its category in the immediate post-war years. But strangely enough, neither tank's design nor even its gun design was responsible for this. The Centurion III fired a new round that used a narrow diameter, thinned, solid steel spike or arrow that was wrapped in a light metal jacket to give it the same diameter as the bore. This round was called an Armoured Piercing Discarding Sabre, or APDS round, and it left the muzzle of the 20 pound at 4,800 feet per second. It could penetrate twice as much armour as the 88mm gun. The Centurion III tank was commercial as well as military success. It was adopted by Australia, Canada, India, South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland and many other nations. The Centurion was perhaps the first tank to face itself in a oh, shooting action. war. Iraq, Egypt and Israel bought Centurions and used them against one another in the 1967 and 1973 Arab-Israeli wars. The United States purchased Centurions and gave them to Denmark and the Netherlands under the military aid program. The Centurion main battle tank 5, 6, 7 and 8 models were successfully up-armoured and upgunned with the 105mm L7 series of guns, one of the most famous British guns ever produced. Fact. The final version, the Centurion 13, was equipped with a 105mm L7A2 gun, the same one used on the West German Leopard 1 series tank. Also the Israeli Makava and the American M48A5, M60 and M1 Abrams. Also the Japanese Type 74 and many other main battle tanks. The tank's hull was divided into the usual three compartments. The driver's compartment was in the front, the fighting compartment was in the centre. The engine compartment was at the rear and separated from either two compartments by a fireproof wall. The engine and transmission drove the rear sprockets. A horseman type suspension system was used in which three units on a side of each hold two road wheels on one set of concentric springs. Six return rollers were employed but these were hard to see on the later model tanks since the skirt armour for protection against high explosive anti-tank projectiles covered most of the treads. The commander and gunner were seated on the right hand side of the turret, the loader on the left. The commander had a cupola that could be turned into a complete circle independently of the turret. Infrared searchlights and driving lights were installed on later variations, and the maximum armour thickness was 6 inches on the turret front and 4.6 inches on the hull glasses plate. 
The L7A2 main gun had an effective range of 1,968 yards when using armoured piercing discarding sabre rounds and 4,374 yards when using high explosive squash head rounds. Train crews could fire up to 8 rounds per minute. The main gun was aimed using a coaxially mounted 50 caliber machine gun that fired traces and 3 round bursts up to a range of around 1,968 yards. The gunner watched the tracer rounds through the periscope gun sight and set the range on the drum device linked to the main gun. Two 7.6mm NATO machine guns were also carried, one mounted on the commander's cupola and the other coaxially to the left hand side of the main gun for use against unarmoured vehicles and enemy personnel. Later variations of the Centurion also had 12 smoke discharges, 6 mounted on each side of the turret to allow it to pull out of dangerous situations. The 13 models, 13 models of the Centurion were built by 4 manufacturers, Leyland Motors, the Royal Ordnance Factory at Leeds, the Royal Ordnance Factory at Woolwich and Vickers Limited. Five other vehicles based on the Centurion have also been built. These include two Centurion Mark V bridge layers, the Centurion Mark II and Mark V armoured recovery vehicles, and the Centurion Beach armoured recovery vehicle. Although Centurion went out of service with the British Army, it continued to be an extremely potent punch in the arsenals of Denmark, Israel, Jordan, the Netherlands, South Africa, Somalia, Sweden and Switzerland. Centurion currently holds the record of being the longest serving tank in British history, which puts it among the longest serving tanks ever. The tank has seen action all over the globe, whether it's part of the British Army or among many other armoured units of its allies. The Centurion really did live up to its reputation. In Korea, the 8th King's Royal Irish Hussars successfully covered the retreat of British troops during the Battle of Injin River in 1951. The performance of the tank during this battle confirmed the status of the Centurion within the British Army. US General John O'Daniel famously stated regarding the tank of the 8th Hussars Regiment that they were able to dominate the battleground completely including rough mountain terrain. Sadly, the Centurion never did develop a nuclear, biological and chemical defence system for the vehicle. It also did not have amphibious capabilities, and to be honest with you, I would never want to try and get any type of water with this thing. <laughs> However, a deep fording kit was developed as was a frontal dozer blade so it could dig into firing positions, very key for defence. Its only real weakness, guys, was its operational range, which the Mark V tried to solve by providing a very small trailer of fuel, which, to be honest, not a good idea. There are many different Mark versions of the Centurion tank. They range from the Mark I all the way to the Mark 13, and some of the variations are between the guns, the ranging machine guns that they use, the infrared, the night vision equipment, fume extractors, multiple stowage areas, and different types of cupolas on the vehicle itself. Obviously, other vehicles were up armoured with different armour packages, and different main gun mantles and canvas covers were placed onto the vehicle. Mainly though, we're talking about the firepower and up armouring of the vehicle, and overall they're very similar in terms of the chassis setup of the vehicle. Production of the Centurion ended in 1962, by which stage the massive 4,423 lump load of vehicles had been produced and manufactured by ROF Leeds, Vickers and Leylands, of which 2,500 were exported. That is a huge amount of tanks to send abroad, guys. However, most were pretty much replaced by the former operators with German Leopard 1s. Operators have included Australia, Austria, Canada, Denmark, Egypt, India, Iraq, Israel, Kuwait, Lebanon, Jordan, Netherlands, New Zealand, Singapore, South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland. As it stands, the Centurion still remains a quite a pertinent presence, albeit limited, in the modern world. Her derivatives are still in play which promote the original Centurion hull as a superior and successful design. The service of all these systems being used on the Centurion essentially ran from 1945 to about the 1990s, covering over 60 years of very faithful service and clearly making her one of the best tanks of all time. So time to put my spin on this tank and what I actually think of it. Now as I've mentioned before, I am a little biased and that's okay, sometimes it's okay to be biased because you know, if you're a patriot and you love your country and you know something has performed well both statistically and historically, you're going to side towards it. I'm not going to not like a tank because it's from my own country. It's just factual information that this tank was produced very, very well. Whether it be from the L7 rifle gun that the tank used, the innovative new armoured piercing discarding sabre round that these vehicles used, it did very, very well worldwide and that speaks for itself, guys. If countries worldwide thought that this was a good vehicle, 
it clearly has done itself very, very well in serving in multiple environments, whether it be the desert, you know. Israelis removed the turret from the shot and took the tank's hull and used it for other vehicles. It just... It's a multitude of uses as well. I mean, the vehicle's chassis and platform was very good for other vehicles that could have been used for, whether it be armored repair, engineering, and all that good stuff. It just had a multitude of uses. The Rolls-Royce engine, again, clearly a very reliable, very powerful engine, and for its day, of course, and we're talking about a tank that was designed, you know, almost 70 years ago or more, uh, which is incredible to me that a tank like this is still rolling. Um, looking at this track not being live and spring-loaded is, is kind of cringe, though, I must admit. I can't imagine having a track like that, driving with, uh, you know, non-live-loaded tracks. But uh, this, again, tells the tale of how reliable these vehicles would have been, and they're still using them today. You know, live track is a very standard now, uh, and these vehicles still don't use live track. It's still rolling, guys. They're still moving to this day, working very, very hard. I love this tank. I love it not because it's British, not because of how well it's performed in warfares, because it still lives on today. It's not bad for a tank that that's old. You, you got to admit it though, I mean it's still rolling to this day in some forces around the world. Should it be? Probably not. But the fact that it still is and still able to perform quite well is incredible to me. This is one of those vehicles I look at that seems like it could be very easily upgraded with some slap-on packages, maybe a bigger engine, and still perform incredibly well for its day. It's not a modern type vehicle, it's not going to be able to take on modern type armoured vehicles, but it would be very good at being able to support within an insurgent role, or you know, being able to provide overwatch for troops on the ground, or even taking out small armoured personnel carriers and such. It's never really designed for the modern conflicts, which is why a lot of people give this vehicle a hard time when they see it on the TV, or they see it in, you know, on footage and stuff, they're like, oh what the hell is a Centurion still being used today for? Because it still works, it still does the job. It's a, the same question can be asked for many tanks out there. Why are we still using the T, you know, T62? Why are we still using the T72? These are old tanks, maybe not as old as this one, but the fact that this vehicle is still rolling and still putting rounds down range out there baffles me, but also makes me extremely proud to know that this tank is from both the UK and serving very, very well around the world. So for me guys, this vehicle is a classic. It's like, kind of like a classic car, you know, it, it, it gets better with age and I look at this tank and that's what I think, it's like a fine wine. It just gets better with age, it's a, a tank that defies history. Should it be defying history? Maybe not, but it is and that makes me very, very happy. So I love the Centurion tank. Guys, I would really appreciate it if you could leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this tank. Do you think it's a vehicle that should still be serving today? Uh, do you think it's a classic? Do you think it's a good tank? And let me know your reasons why. I appreciate you stopping by today, and as always, I would love it if you could leave a like, and check out my Patreon if you do wish to support my channel. As always, you can also go to Facebook and add me as a friend on there, and I'll get updated for any new videos coming out. With that being said, hit that little bell too and you'll be able to be notified of any more military or gaming videos that come up in the future. Thanks again for watching guys, have a great day and bye bye.